This is an ordinary crepe bandage, 150 centimeters. It is a, a retention bandage that's often and freely available in um, dressing rooms uh, anywhere in the world. 150 millimeter roll of um, uh, orthopedic wool. It can be either synthetic or it can be pure cotton, depending on price and availability. A second roll of 150 millimeter retention bandage and some tape just to tape down the whole bandage system and to keep it in place at the top. For practicality reasons, this system is started at the ankle because a lot of patients that needs to be in this system comes from the developing world and is doing a lot of walking. So if the system is starting over here, it tends to fray from the, from the edge out and the sustainability of the bandage is lost. So it is started the same as on short stretch um, uh, theory at the ankle, fixed on the ankle, and then worked down over the heel. You're making my heart much better than you've done that. <laughs> to the base of the toe, back over the heel, and you will see this is where the 150 millimeter comes in very practical, because the middle of the bandage is over the heel, so the chance that it will go open is slim. What you will see now is that I'm not stretching out this bandage. I am merely rolling it down. And this is the technique from Charlie on applying plaster cast of Paris. Following the anatomy of the leg rather than force the bandage where it doesn't want to go. And what happens now with this system is that we have actually compressed the calf and packed the calf well into the system. Tape it down. So this is an ordinary retention tape. This is a paper-based tape. Use a broader tape rather than fine strips because fine strips on its own can add extra pressure. The purpose of this is just to secure the bandage, not to add extra pressure. that I have put the bandage on first. This is different from literature where the orthopedic band will, will go onto the skin first. What, what's found in practice is that slipping of this bandage system is much less if we sandwich the role of orthopedic wool in between the two layers because what is the actual role of this is to absorb extra moisture and to wick it away from the skin. As well. It gives it a conforming layer, and certainly with the orthopedic wool not next to the skin, it's not going to be as warm in a hot weather climate. And that's what we found. So we have found that patients can adhere to this system very easily because of that wicking away of, the, of sweat and moisture and the wicking away of exudate away from the skin. Again, I start at the ankle and do exactly the same thing over the heel to the base of the toe and also allow the roll of orthopedic wool to go where it wants to go and it will go strange places it will depend on the individual leg Notice you've left the heel out relatively. Not too thick on the heel. Not too thick on the heel because patients in compression wants to have their shoes on. Then we can go to the third one. Same thing. I have put the whole system on in a spiral from, from right to left. In the last layer, I just turn it around to the opposite direction. Again, starting at the ankle, go right around, over the heel,
over the toe, back over the heel, and allow the bandage to go where it wants to go. checking behind the knee to make sure that it's not going to be restricted absolutely. in that area. Absolutely. And I have seen as well that by putting whatever extra layer you have on your bandage around your calf muscle supports the calf muscle pump to do its work when actually when the patient is walking. So it is adding to the offloading of the ankle volume if there's oedema present. And again, tape it down and there's the system. Now I need you to hold this for me. I've got it. Again, no added pressure when taping this down. So don't take the tape and do this when you take down a bandage. Notice the length of tape that's being put on and that it's secured no. in two or three places yes. and not circumferential. And that is it. It's very light and it's flexible. Walk on it. Yep. So that you can see that this is flexible and that it is very light and that it's not going to interfere with function and we can put the shoe and sock on uh, at the same time as well. Will you please put your shoe on? Yep. So this bandage can be worn with a normal shoe and sock without restricting the patient for activities of everyday living. I think if we take cost into consideration it will depend on the facility that this uh, system is used in. Uh, it is driven by availability. It is driven by low cost. Uh, in the country where I am working, the whole system costs about 70 rand, which equated into dollar will be about $10. So for a week of a bandage system left on a leg of a patient, we can treat a venous leg also at a dollar a day. And I think that makes this system wearable. Patients adhere to the system. Patient can maintain their dignity with the system because they can wear shoes, they can go into normal socks, and they can walk with it. So it's my personal uh, preference to use it, and um, I have seen that it benefit on healing and that an alternative system may be a viable option in countries where nothing else is available.